So, uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody for getting on and, and covering Penn State football and, and obviously uh, covering the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Uh, it's been a great opportunity. I want to thank uh, Chick-fil-A. I want to thank uh, the Peach Bowl. I want to thank uh, the Marriott Marquis. It's been awesome. We've had a great experience so far. Uh, also would like to take a minute and, and thank Georgia Tech. We were able to go over and use their facilities uh, for practice on Sunday, I think it was. Um, and it's been great. We've, we've had a really, really good experience. So uh, appreciate everybody there. Um, obviously, great opportunity. You know, first time ever playing Ole Miss, which is unusual in 2023 to say two storied programs like Penn State and Ole Miss had never played each other before. Uh, pretty cool opportunity. And then for Penn State specifically, um, an opportunity to be the first program to ever win all six New Year's Six Bowl games. Um, never been done before, and you know, with the opportunity of doing it, if we do it, uh, it'll never be done again. You know, based on us going to the playoffs after this, anyway. So, uh, really cool opportunity. Our guys have been great. I'm thankful to them. They, they've done a really good job of knowing when it's time to work and when it's time to enjoy themselves. To me, that's that's what bowl games are all about. Uh, but again, the city of Atlanta, Chick-fil-A, the Peach Bowl, um, Marriott Marquis, everybody's been awesome to us, and we're very appreciative of the opportunity. So open up the questions. Appreciate that, Coach. All right, we're going to get into questions. We'll take our first question from Mark Brennan of Lions 247. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey, thank you for your time. You got me? Yes, sir. Hey, Mark. Hey. Yeah, you know, um, I think you guys have heard me talk about this in the past. Um, you know, these are these are different times in, in college football, and we've worked really hard to, to create a relationship with our players that there can be open and honest dialogue and discussions. Um, we've tried to create an environment where really there's no reason for any player to opt out. Uh, and what I mean by that is um, – you know, all the way back to Saquon Barkley, uh, who is being projected as a top 15 pick. Uh, there's a way to do this where the player, the family, the agents, whoever, um, everybody's comfortable with the plan. And, uh, you know, to be able to finish this season with your teammates, I think, is important. Um, but I also, I also understand, you know, the, the challenge of it. So, you know, just try to have great conversations and discussion Kalen was great. Uh, Kalen's parents were great, uh, had really good discussions, and came up with a plan that, that everybody was comfortable with. So uh, great to have him here and be a part of the program you know, for one more game. Hey, Greg. I was a little confused, Greg, at first who it was. They said pick hell. I didn't know if you, you know, got fancy on me over the last couple of weeks. No fanciness, not nothing sexually. Um, we made a joke last week about, or two weeks ago, about guys maybe not needing to announce they were coming back. That would be the expectation. But Tyler Warren did put out since we last talked that he is coming back next year. What does that mean to you and your program uh, as you get ready to spring forward with this game in the 2024? Yeah, you know, obviously him and Theo both had some decisions to make. Um, you know, Theo made his decision and we're very, very supportive of that. And, and Tyler made his and obviously we're supportive and excited about that. Now we have a responsibility uh, for all these guys, just like we did with Olu, to make sure that we do everything in our power, that it was the right decision. And um, again, healthy discussions with both Tyler, Tyler's mom and dad, uh, Coach Howell, myself, Chuck Losey, um, of what that would look like. And, you know, we've been fortunate. Andy Frank does a really good job. Him and Chuck Losey are working with all the NFL scouts and GMs and getting really good feedback about where guys are at. But the other thing is not just where you're being um, anticipated or predicted of being drafted. What are your strengths? And then what are your weaknesses? And if a guy decides to come back, how do we attack those weaknesses over the next, you know, 
seven months so that they're in a much better position next year. And so are we as an organization. So, um, you know, we've, we've done a really good job of recruiting and developing the tight end room. I think, I think Tyler really helps us because uh, there's some guys behind him we think are really talented, but it sure is nice to have a veteran back while those guys are gaining some experience. So, um, you know, a real positive for us in this game and a real positive for us moving in, um, you know, to the season. Hey, Joe. Hey, James, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can I come in again? Yeah, right. Yes, sir. So, uh, talking about Coach Smith, what, what have your impressions been of Jackson Dunkley? I, I lost you there. You were talking and he just kind of went away. Uh, yeah, you're starting out good. Jackson comes through clear and then all of a sudden you go off. Yeah, uh, I assume that, but I didn't want to assume. I wanted to make sure. Um, yeah, you know, obviously you look at his numbers. They put up really good numbers in the passing game in terms of yards per attempt, in terms of completion percentage, uh, touchdown to interception ratio. He's also a guy that can beat you with his mind and decision making, you know, with his arm and accuracy. Uh, but then also with his feet. So, you know, they're a challenging offense. You take his athleticism, you take their tempo. Um, you know, they're one of the better offenses that, that we've seen this year. So it's going to be a challenge. And, you know, Lane's always done a really good job, you know, specifically on that side of the ball. So it'll be a challenge. And obviously, as we know in college football, um, or really at any level in football, uh, your, your quarterback – you know, has a major impact and factor in your success. So, you know, a ton of respect for him for what we've seen on film so far. All right, let's go next to Ali Barubi. Go ahead, Ali. Hey, Ali. Coach, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. When we talked to Gary Stoken a couple weeks ago, he said, um, obviously, they were excited to welcome you guys to Atlanta, but that uh, Mercedes-Benz also focusing on the playoff game next year and the national championship. So he said he's hoping you guys come back to Atlanta a couple times. Uh, how much can this type of an environment prepare you for your future goals? Uh, for those guys who are coming back for 2024, how much does a Peach Bowl appearance help prepare you for uh, a next season and a, a potential playoff run? Well, first of all, I want to thank Gary. Gary's been awesome. I've known Gary for a long time, um, and he's a pro. He's a football guy and uh, has been doing this a long time. Uh, and he's been a pleasure to work with. Um, you know, I've been I've been very impressed with with everything from the Peach Bowl, and Gary obviously is leading it from the top. So um, appreciate that. But yeah, I think I think these bowl games, in a lot of ways, um, they are obviously um, the ending point of your season. Uh, that's that's obvious. But I do think there's a lot of discussion and argument about. You could also make the argument they're the first game of, of next season for you. Um, you're probably going to have some situations where you're going to have some players that maybe were playing complementary roles for most of the season are going to have bigger roles in this game. So that's an opportunity for them. It's also an opportunity for the coaches uh, to have them ready to play. Um, you know, that's, that's part of it. That's, that's part of this, uh, this, this bowl season. Um, so yeah, I think there's there's a lot to be said that yeah, this is the finishing touches of last season. But I think there's also an opportunity for us to get some momentum from this going into next season. And some of the guys that are going to play bigger roles on Saturday are obviously going to play bigger roles next year. So um, you know, besides that, I'll, I'll probably leave it at that. But I appreciate the question. All right, we'll go next to Megan. You as well. Wanted to ask you a question. Um, so we talked to obviously uh, Coach Giffen earlier. He's very complimentary of you um, and your team. And in my mind, I thought, hey, this must be a, a really good opportunity to ask about folks kind of behind the scenes, your staff. Um, you know, one of the things Coach Giffen talked about was your top uh, defense. So I was just wondering, I guess, can you talk a little bit about your staff and what you think of the work that they've done this season? 
Well, it's interesting because when you first started that question, I was I was thinking about uh, Kevin Threlkill, and I was thinking about uh, Destiny. Uh, I was thinking about Ben Kerr. I was thinking about Will Ryman. I was thinking about, I thought that's what you were asking at first. These are all our ops people that plan this whole trip from the hotel to the meetings to the meals and everything, and they do a phenomenal job. We actually talked about that uh, in our staff meeting this morning and not taking all the organizational stuff that goes into it for granted. But, yeah, our, our staff has been phenomenal. I mean, we're in a little bit different situation because – We've had change at both the offensive and defensive coordinator positions. Obviously, Manny Diaz has now become the, the head coach at Duke, and we wish him nothing but success. Did a great job for us for the two years that he was with us. You know, we've been fortunate. We've had a number of coaches leave our program to go be head coaches. Um, so, you know, that, that's also, I think, shined a light on, on my staff as well because at the end of the season on offense, um, you know, we, we made a change as the offensive coordinator and Jay Wansider and Ty House stepped up into to that role. And really, we played well the last two games of the year on offense. So um, on defense, we got, you know, Anthony Poindexter and Rob Smith stepping up into that role and you know uh, we've played as as good if not the best um, defense in all of college football arguably depending on which metric you're looking at the number one defense in college football and we're going to need that against uh, the fighting Lane Kiffins over there at Ole Miss they, they do a great job I got a ton of respect for him and um, it should be a heck of a game. Hey, John. Hey, James. Good to see you. Appreciate your time. You too. Hey, beyond recruiting, what do you believe can be gained by playing in a new city, a new school, and giving some people the opportunity to see Penn State football up close for the first time? Yeah, so I think a couple things. I think, you know, the amount of time that we're down here um, and going to the Martin Luther King Museum, there's an opportunity there, right, for our guys to experience some of that. Um, for them to be able to go into Mercedes-Benz Stadium, cool experience. We practiced in there today. I thought that was great. Some of those venues, I think, help you, whether it's for bowl games, whether it's for conference championship games, you know, whether it's the playoffs, playing in some of those venues, I think there's value in that as well. So you don't have a number of guys walking into those stadiums kind of you know, looking around and kind of awestruck. Um, us playing that last game of the year, you know, at Michigan State in the Detroit Lions Stadium. I thought there was there was value in that as well. But I think also, uh, to your point, I think, you know, Penn State being one of the most storied programs in college football, but being able to come down into SEC country and allow maybe some people to see us that normally wouldn't see us specifically live rather than on TV. No different than us going to Auburn uh, two years ago and playing well. Um, and I think maybe a um, portion of the country um, got a chance to see us live that normally doesn't see us live and says, hey, you know, Big Ten plays good football and Penn State plays really good football. And we got the chance to see it firsthand. I think there's, there's value in that as well, even some of the media. You got some of the local media that maybe hasn't had a chance to see us up and close uh, and in person. Um, I think there's value in that as well. So there's a there's a ton of different reasons for our players um, to get out in a different part of the country for our staff um, to play an SEC opponent that we got a ton of respect for to play in this type of venue. I think there's a lot of reasons why this makes sense and why I think you know the bowl uh, experience is still valuable for college football and for our players. Hey, Seth. Um, you're now the signing day is in the past. You have the two new coordinators for next year. Um, what does this past week kind of look like for you to kind of get back to football in a way? And how have you kind of seen the two uh, new coaches kind of mesh in, in practices? Well, a couple things. So one of the things I would like to say is I'm very appreciative of the staff and the, and the job they did. I think we take it for granted at Penn State having a drama-free signing day. Um, that's unusual in college football. 
And we've been able to do that on a fairly consistent basis, and I think people take that for granted. On top of that, uh, our recruiting staff did a great job. Our assistants did a great job because, again, we had change at both coordinator positions right before signing day. Most people, when that happens, you're going to lose some recruits because of it. Again, we, we didn't have any of that, so I think there's there's value in that. But having both Tom and Andy here, um, obviously you'd prefer not to have to have changes be made, but if they are made, I think there's a ton of value in doing what we're doing. Tom's ability to be around the staff, Andy's ability to be around the staff, uh, staff meetings, game planning, watching film, watching the players, how we do things. So Tom's not out there at practice and Andy's not there out at practice during spring ball, still trying to kind of get a feel for how we practice and how we go about our business. So I think there's a ton of value. I think I've, I've said it in the past, Joe Moorhead did it this way. Manny Diaz did it this way. I think there's, there's a lot of value uh, and doing it this way. And I think it for, for more times than not, it has allowed us to springboard the day after the season ends and really hit the ground running. Well, thank you very much for your time. We'll, we'll end it for you there, and, and we'll get your players in next. We'll let you get back to work. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Have a great day.